Hello everyone, it's so nice to see you all again. My name is Pooja Devedi. Welcome to my class. Today we are going to talk about the two-state solution. What is it? Which countries support it? What is the origin of it? Is it really the solution? And what is the situation of Palestinians currently? From the perspective of GS Mains Paper Second, it is important that you understand this topic in depth till the very end. Also, do not worry about making notes because it is provided through my telegram channel, Pooja Devedi UPSC. If you have any queries regarding this examination, you can also follow me on my Instagram and follow me on my threads. Now, Joe Biden has recently asked the Middle Eastern countries to consider the two-state solution to be the only solution to the ongoing war. Countries such as Lebanon are also encouraging it. But what is it? Let's see that. Two-state solution means there should be an establishment of a separate nation of Israel and separate nation of Palestine. And this date back, dates back to 1937. This was proposed by the Peel Commission. Right now, we see certain enclaves such as Gaza, the Gaza Strip, such as West Bank, such as East Jerusalem and the rest of the Israel. So these are four enclaves where Palestinians right now are living. One state solution is that there should be only one nation. It could be either Palestine, or Israel. But that is not a solution ever. Right now, Palestinians who are very staunch in nature and Israelis who are very staunch in nature, they are calling for a one nation solution. Either the existence of Israel or the existence of Palestine. But a two nation, two state solution, not a nation, two state solution suggests that there should be a creation of two nations. Israel and Palestine and both should coexist in harmony. It proposed the solution of Israel and Palestine becoming two separate states and coexisting in harmony. The one state solution means Israel, the entire area of Israel, West Bank, Gaza Strip. These should be merged and this becomes a one nation. So this is also a solution. But is it a really solution? What do you think? Tell me in the comment segment. Leftists and Palestinians, they would want to create a single democratic country. This is what they need. Who? Leftists and Palestinians. And what is the rationale behind this particular, uh, you know, one nation solution? That Arab Muslims would eventually outnumber the Jews. That means they will have their own haven. And that is not a humanitarian solution. But because at the receiving end would be one group. Here, the one group would be Jews. Rightists and Israelis believe that Israel, if it annexes West Bank, either forcing out the Palestinians or denying them right to vote, this could also be a solution. So this is all something that is uh, basically because of this only, because of the one state solution manifestation only, we are registering wars. And most Zionists reject this option as an acceptable solution because it would definitely lead to human rights violation from either side. Moving on, the Oslo Accords of 1993, which was signed between the government of Israel and the Palestine Liberation Organization provided a, a roadmap for two-state solution in which Palestine would agree to give up the claim to their 78% of the land that belonged to them historically in exchange of 22% of the land for independence. However, this was a failure because of the continued occupation of Israel in these regions. Moving on, most polling recently that was conducted before the ongoing war, it suggested that Palestinians and Israelis both wanted a two-nation, two-state solution. But on ground, we are not seeing it. Inability of Israelis and Palestinians to come to two-state terms has led to a recent surge in the interest as a one-state solution. So this recent war, which is actually escalated by terror attacks uh, by the Hamas, it has led to a call for a one-state solution. Recently, if we look at the polls, the current one, the Israelis are growing more skeptical towards the two-nation solution. So, how did the land trajectory of Israel change? The entire evolution of Israel as a nation has changed throughout the years because of wars. So Israel is something that we have to keep in mind. Most of the countries say that we are standing with Israel and Israel is reverting to a version of its pre-1967 borders. 
because of certain wars that happened on May 14, 1948, also including the Arab-Israeli war, several successive wars in 1967, 87, 2000, and the most importantly, the 1967 Six-Day War that was that happened. Because of the 1967 Six-Day War, Israel occupied many regions. Israel took the hold of Sinai Peninsula. Israel took the hold of Golan Heights in Syria. Israel also claims certain parts of the bordering areas. Israel claims Gaza Strip and the West Bank. So what happens that the Six Day War is majorly a war between many countries, Israel, Egypt, Syria and the Palestinian enclaves. Now Israel wants majorly, it wants harmony and Palestinians also want harmony. But the problem is that we are not looking towards any sort of solution. We are either calling out for one state solution or we are calling for no solution at all or the going of the status quo. But the American president says that there will not be any kind of status quo. Status quo would not maintain because of the ongoing war. That is why we have to have a two state solution. There are certain things that we have to keep in mind. The, the enclaves that I told you about in which regions they are living. So you see that this region is West Bank. This is one enclave. East Jerusalem is another enclave. The Gaza Strip is another enclave. And the rest of the Israel is another enclave. So we have four enclaves where Palestinians right now live. There is no state solution to the greater Jerusalem area. Here housing and business restrictions are there on Palestinians. Larger Israeli majority is growing over there and the control over Greater Jerusalem is increasing. So this is causing a lot of impact on the issue of Palestinians having a lot of uh, their own nation. Then second enclave is the rest of the Israel. There is different regulation for Israelis and different regulations for Palestinians. Their citizenship movement, they all has been under tight vigilance and tight security. Then we have West Bank. Here we have the hollow Palestinian government. And there is de facto on the ground actual Israeli security control over Palestinian security forces. There is tight control over Palestinian movements and steadily, steadily growing presence of Israeli settlers are over there. The most embarrassing or the most we can say oppressed region is that of Gaza where 2.1 million Palestinians are living but there are no Israeli Jews. There is no major industry or export so it's very tight in nature. Moving on, India since the time we can count upon how India's foreign policy grew, India has also supported the two-state two solution. Earlier it wasn't doing so because on the basis of religion only, we got the creation of India and Pakistan. So on the basis of religion, India in the very beginning, during the tenure of Prime Minister Nehru, we did not support this creation of a different nation on the basis of religion. But now India's policy has evolved over the years. One thing we also have to understand over here, the Prime Minister's tweet. The Prime Minister's tweet seemingly looked in favor of Israel. But it wasn't. When the official statement of the Minister of External Affairs came, it of course talks about a viable state of Palestine, a sustainable state for Palestine, a sustainable nation for Palestine. So Prime Minister's tweet was against the terror attacks. You have to read it very carefully if you want to give this examination. It was against the terror attacks, although in India Hamas is not a terrorist group. But it was against the terror attacks and not against Palestine. So you have to keep that in mind. Alright, so I hope you understood this topic well. Thank you so much for watching and stay updated.